What we're going to do today uh, is play around with some fur. My name is Ellie Jones. I am the manager at Drear Island. And uh, we have 348 acres in the middle of Lake Murray. Uh, two campgrounds, 10 camper cabins, five villas, lots of boat ramps, uh, Great Lake, central located. Um, but what we're going to do today, and uh, like I said, we're going to be playing around with a little bit of fur, is uh, tying a fly that I use for stripers and just about everything else. Um, right. This is the, the finished product, kind of similar to what we're going to finish up today. Um, this is a Clouser minnow. You can tie them in a bunch of different sizes. Uh, Bob Clouser uh, on the Susquehanna River uh, created this fly for smallmouth bass. But you can use it from everything from panfish to tarpon and everything in between. I use it mostly for striped bass and largemouth on Lake Murray and other lakes. Um, very versatile fly, very easy fly to tie. Doesn't take a whole lot of materials. Um, as you can see, it actually rides hook up with some weight on the bottom of it. So it's somewhat weedless. Um, you can do a multitude of colors, multitude of flash. It doesn't really matter. Uh, I tend to time a little bit bulkier just to push a little bit more water uh, for stripers and largemouth. Uh, some of the ones used in river smallmouth are a lot sparser, which is really the correct way to time. Um, but we're going to get we're getting ready to get started. And uh, some of the things that you'll need uh, basically is we have bucktail. Two different colors one for the belly and one for the, the top and we have uh, crystal flash and you can use any kind of flash crystal flash you can use flash boo you can use anything you want uh, this is just gonna be a generic pattern that we use here chartreuse and white catches fish everywhere it catches redfish it catches tarpon it catches stripers we also have different a variety of dumbbell eyes which are the weight and flip that hook over. We also have some lighter bead chain eyes, uh, various different types of eyes. And I'll let y'all decide on which color eyes y'all do wanna uh, use. So y'all kind of be thinking about that. And the hook I use the most on Lake Murray is a Daiichi 2546. This is a size one, uh, great hook, inexpensive. Uh, but it it will not it's, it's it's never been out on me on Lake Murray. I've never had one that wanted to to fail on me. So with that, uh, and obviously we got thread. I use monofilament thread a lot. We got napkin in case we need it. A couple of different pairs of scissors. Um, whip finisher, Sally Hansen's. And just you just showing you a couple of different types of thread that you could use. Um, but anyway, um, so if anybody needs me to repeat something or you got uh, got any questions, just kind of let me know. Um, again, my name is EJ uh, Ellie Jones. I'm the manager here at Drear Island, uh, and uh, we're getting ready to get started. We're going to tie us a, a clouser minnow. So what I'm going to do is. Obviously, you got to have a vise. So, what I'm going to do is, uh, this is my vise. It's it's dirty, it's worn, but it's tied a lot of flies. So, anyway, what I'm going to do is I'm going to place this hook right there at the bend. Get this in there, and uh, we're going to let me get this thing tight. There we go. And she's in there, and that's. You know, some people argue different ways to time. I actually have an arm on mine that is straight, that is made for clousers, but uh, this is gonna suffice. So what we're gonna do, we got the thread, and I'm gonna start the thread, and you kind of lay the thread over the top, kind of pinch it like that, and then you just wanna wind it. Are you kidding me? We got a phone call. <laughs> All right, thought that phone was off. All right. So, hang on one second. <laughs> All right, sorry about that. So, did we decide what co what type of eyes, color eyes? So I guess I'm gonna go with the chartreuse with a little bit of white on them here. 
and you can see I went to about a quarter of the way back and uh, what we'll do is get this thing on here since I ran out a while ago make sure this thing's on here really good get it back you just want a good thread base a question was posed for those of us new to fishing can you explain why these are used they just mimic a bait fish, uh, a wide variety. Like I say, my these these clousers, especially on Lake Murray and other places, can imitate a shad or a herring, um, and it just it really triggers them. So you can time sparser for smaller bait fish, or you can time a lot denser and push water for say a crab. They a black clouser on. You know, in salt water mimics a, a crab. You can you can do tail and redfish with a black clouser. Um, so that's what they mimic. They they just mimic a, a wide variety of of uh, minnows, anything from alewives. They get around lights, etc. So, all right. So what we're going to do? Got my eye. That's what we decide, and I go about a quarter of the way back, and I'm gonna get it kind of started. Okay, you see, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to do some figure eight wraps here. So, just to kind of get this thing straight. And you see how it just kind of straightened up? And what we're going to do is I'm going to continue to wrap this. Now, I will say, because of the sake of time, etc., when I do these flies for myself and when I time for the... Uh, stripers because they are bucktail i tend to use a lot of uv epoxies i'm not gonna mess with that today uh and i go through stages in regards to building them so they don't just fall apart after two or three fish um i've called over 20 plus stripers in a night or a day on some of these stri on some of these flies um like i said i'm just gonna finish up some wraps here and I'm gonna go right to the front of the hook. So right now, this is the belly of the fly. The fly is actually gonna ride in the water just like that right there. All right, so what we're gonna do, we're gonna come back over here, we're gonna get a little bit of thread. All right, so since it's the belly, we're gonna go with white. And I am a little picky on bucktail, so I'll go through a bunch of them before I finally find the one that I really, really want. Uh, just regular. Uh, heavy synthetic type scissors and what we'll do is we'll say cut a little bit lay it down all right so what you'll see is a mess to begin with <laughs> and I'll pick a little bit of it out and then I just kind of thumb it like this just to get some of that that under fur out um, because I'm going to cut it anyway, but I still like to do that just to kind of thin it. Now, this is, I'm not going to say it's the size of a, it's a little bit smaller diameter what I'm using uh, than a pencil eraser, but I actually make them a little bit thinner. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this thing right here at a, kind of a, at an angle. And then what I want to do is I'm going to come right on top of this, hold it straight down. Start it, kind of loose to get it where I want it. Catch it. And then I'll kind of come right over the eyes and make that kind of sit right over. John says, hey. And what I'll do is uh, go right to, you know, about a little over halfway. And uh, then I'll sit here and just kind of wind this. Some people will put flash right here i have done it um the beauty of these flies is you could do a whole lot of stuff with them uh in regards to adding say dumbbell eyes or i mean uh spinners etc just getting some of this loose hair out of the way trying to make this thing just a little bit neater fish don't really care um so this is what we're doing i'm just going to wind this down kind of make this this head here and you see what we got going Kind of looking like something now. All right, so what I'll do right here is I'll flip this thing around, trim a little bit of this. All right, 
Let's see here. All right, so then we get the crystal flash. Uh, sometimes I'll use a, a, a little thicker type flash and I'll use it as what they call a flash tail. Leave it way longer, maybe an inch or two inches longer than the fly. Sometimes they really like that. I'll keep a good many of those in the, in the, uh, so I'll get, we'll say eight, seven, eight, nine, five, six, seven, eight, nine strands of flash boo. I mean, of uh, crystal flash. And you'll see what I do here is I pull this bobbin down and then I lay it halfway in. And then I fold so it's in half. And then I'll just kind of thumb my bobbin back up and then I just lay it right on top in my center layer here. And when I do that, lay those down and you see you see the flash sitting on there and uh it's pretty good how long have you been tying flies uh over 25 27 years and which uh, one's your favorite fly to tie favorite fly i tie one i just sentimental favorite is beard's branch uh it's named after my parents farm uh, the creek that feeds it is a bluegill fly, but it's named after that. I came up with it, and uh, it's a little more intense to to, uh, to tie, but just because it's my family farm, and I've caught my three largest bluegill on that fly. Um, but I do love a clouser. I've got a million of them, and I'm, probably my favorite striper fly is a uh, a coyote, which is a similar version uh, of this. It has a spinner blade up under it. And uses rabbit fur, but it's uh, it's deadly in wintertime for 20 to 30 foot stripers. So, all right, so we've got the, the flash, we have the belly. Um, what I'm getting ready to do here chartreuse, everything like chartreuse. And we're going to cut a little bit here, about the same amount. Like I said, I like to push water with these things, I'm not finessing them. Um, so, you'll see. Kind of what we got here and uh like i said i'll just thumb a little bit of this and then i'll cut the edge here and good scissors are uh, a necessity absolutely <laughs> <laughs> they make your life a lot easier um, and don't cut weird stuff with them if you're going to use these for hair don't cut wire or try to cut anything else just you know, all right, we got, we got another question from right. Jane. She says, why make your own instead of buying? It's Yes, the, the notion would be that people won't uh, save money. You don't save money because you buy a bunch of stuff. Um, there's something about catching a fish on a fly that you tied. Uh, it's, you know, it's hard to explain, really. It's not anything that you go to the store and pick up off the shelf. Um, it's yours. Um, you can be creative with it. It's just like anything, any other type of artist, and that's what I enjoy doing. And I, I've uh, kind of passed it on to my eight-year-old, and hopefully my four-year-old will do the same thing. But what we're going to do is uh, get it tied on top here. And I lay it right in kind of the same area, and I'll do a couple of loose, loose, loose wraps just to kind of get this thing started. Sometimes you can pinch it around. Sometimes this hair wants to flare a little bit more. And I'm going to show you a little deal about that uh, in just a second. We're going to tie this head. This is a typical uh, bulkier type clouser that I tie a lot of times for uh, the schooling stripers. I'll go once behind the, the there. And uh, let's lay this thing down. Let's get the hair, get the back in here. And we'll pull a little bit of this. And, uh, and that's pretty much getting ready to be... Uh, finished product uh that fly will catch fish anywhere in the country stripers largemouth spotted bass smallmouth bass you name it redfish speckled trout crappy everything eats this i am going to show you a little trick with bucktail you see how all this fur all right you you typically going to use this part here the tip the top third of the bucktail it lays out it doesn't flare as much now, if you do a fly that flares more, you're going to use this hair closer to the butt. 
and it's a little bit hollower and what it'll do it'll just kind of flare out it kind of makes for a, a weird looking clouser but a lot of guys the musky guys a lot of those guys when they tie flies they use the the bulky stuff to push a lot of water some of those predator fish like that all right so this is where we're sitting kind of got it done some people whip finish by hand i don't do it i use a whip finisher little tool right here and what this does is just getting ready to finish up my head let me get this just one now where do you buy most of your materials um oh, i mean i started with the kit um which i recommend they have all the basic tools i usually order online because nowhere in columbia has you know like some of the decent scissors um this bakken is probably this i mean this whip finisher is 20 something years old um i just know it use it my brother-in-law gave me this one. Um, I usually get it online. A lot of the bucktail that I get, I get from Wisconsin area. A little bit larger. Uh, the, the deer, the hair's a little bit longer. Uh, some guys custom dye some stuff up that way to get those hairs. Uh, I like a certain crinkle, yet I do like it straight. So I'll go through, sometimes I'll go through all the bucktails at, say, Sportsman's Warehouse. And I may not even buy one because I don't like the way it... Uh, it's going to behave on the hook for myself. It's just a personal preference. All right, got one more question. Mm -hmm. uh, Misty says, are these good for salt water? Yes, this is a salt water hook. Uh, speckled trout love this particular color. Um, a lot of guys will use a little bit of pink hair on it too, kind of make it look like uh, a typical plugs, I mean, uh, soft lures that guys use. Um, but yeah, absolutely. I mean, everything from tarpon, I mean, I've caught redfish on black ones. Uh, olive ones that kind of deal it'll mimic anything i mean it's, it's a great fly great all-around fly uh easy to tie you can tie a wad of them and you know they'll start chewing them up and and whatnot just get another one out um so what we're getting ready to do is uh finish this head up and i got the whip finish and i'll pull a little bit of extra line out here and you hook it over put a little bit of tension you can kind of see that thing pulling right there and i'll lay that thing on top and then I'll just do a couple of wraps because I'm going to coat the head on this thing. And then I'll come back up, pop it, and then she's done. And once we do that, then I'll get my fine tip scissors here, do a little cut, and we have a clouser minute. Now I will say one of the things that I do, I love pink on flies. And a lot of times I use a little tuft of what they call flora fiber right here on the throat. Because when you're throwing into a school of threadfin shad and stripers and the, all the fish look the same, that little bit of paint makes a lot of difference. So if you look at my fly box, there's a lot of tufts of paint right on the throat, what I call a throat right here. And then all you do is you get some Sally Hanses. They didn't have the regular Sally Hanses. This is a little bit thinner, but it works. Um, you'll just do a little bit of this and... Just coat that head. I use, like I said, I use UV epoxy, which is activated by a light. I wasn't getting all into that today, um, but it is. That's all I do. And that's the hard as nails, or that's yes. Yeah, so this is this is extreme wear. It's a little bit thinner, but it's, it it seems to hold up good. Okay. They didn't have. I use clear. Um, you can get head cement somewhere, but hard as nails is as good as I. You know, the red label one is as good as you're going to get. And uh, there's the finished product. That's how it's going to ride in the water. Um, good saltwater hook, good hook, good sharp hook. Um, I tie a loop knot in the front of it so it gives it some motion. Um, but that's it. We got another question. Mm -hmm. Marcel says, where do you recommend the high-quality bucktail you like to use? Do you have a name? Uh, you can go one of the look online at any of the fly shops up in Wisconsin Lund's fly shop is a is a good one I've gotten a lot of materials from him L-U-N-D-S -E and uh, Brian up there he, he really has some good good bucktail and longer hackles etc that I use for striped flies um, so I've kind of started going that direction but look at those you, you got Schultz Outfitters uh, up in Michigan, I believe, and they've got a lot of good materials. So, um, and if anybody has any questions, they can email me or whatnot. Um, you know, e jones, e jones at scprt.com. Um, be happy to try to answer anything. Um, when I started, we didn't have YouTube videos, so 
you know, it was just trial and error. And now with the YouTube videos, etc., anybody can tie these things. Um, they're great, great all purpose. You catch fish in ponds and lakes, rivers, it doesn't matter. Um, what weight fly rod would you use? For this one, I use an eight weight, seven or eight weight. Okay. Um, it depends on time of the year. Like in the winter time, I use a nine weight with this type fly, but then I'll tie like a, 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 a kind of a shank on the hook and I'll do a leader with a smaller one, kind of like the bucktail ice fly that a lot of the conventional guys use. Just to turn that over, I'll use a nine weight. Um, but I mean, seven, eight, you know, seven or eight weight will work fine. All right. Any more questions? I don't think so. Again, my name is Ellie Jones. I'm the manager at Dreer. Uh, I love striped bass and uh, I like to throw the, the, as people call it, the hippie stick. And, uh, I hope y'all enjoyed it and uh you know like our you know, like the youtube channel and uh give us some likes and give us your comments and i hope i entertained you and i hope i wasn't too nervous i didn't fall off the stool or anything so i think <laughs> we're in good shape with that hope everybody has a great day